you awaken in a world of shimmering microcosms. As the temperature warms and the humidity rises, your egg's thin shell, no thicker than a human hair, softens. Within, you feel the gentle pulse of life, the rhythm of growth that has carried you through embryonic stages. Then, with a barely perceptible tear, your shell ruptures. You emerge, not from a womb, but from a clear, spherical egg clinging to the underside of a moss leaf. Your first breaths, or more accurately, your first exchanges with the environment, are of water filtered through microscopic pores. You taste the dissolved organic matter around you, fine particles of algae, bacteria, yeast. Every molecule is potential fuel. You extend your buccal stylets, tiny needle-like mouthparts, and draw in fluid. It's awkward at first. Your body, still translucent, quivers as you learn to coordinate muscle movements. But necessity is a relentless teacher. Hunger drives you to perfect each motion. Around you, the world is both vast and perilous. You are barely 0.2 millimeter long, eight stubby legs tipped with claws no larger than a dust moat. Above, the moss canopy forms a shadowy forest. Below, droplets of morning dew act as portals to deeper realms. Drift too far from the leaf, and you risk falling into a turbulent droplet, tumbling until you land in an inhospitable pool. Stay too long in sunlight, and desiccation will seize you. Your first few hours are devoted entirely to feeding. You glide across the leaf surface, searching for patches of bacterial biofilm. When you encounter one, you anchor a pair of front legs and straighten your body, bracing yourself. Then, you plunge your stylets into the microbial mat and suck in nourishment, minute by minute, building the energy reserves that will fuel your next molt. After each meal, you pause, retract your mouth parts, and digest. Soon comes the first molt. You pause beneath the protective patch of algal film and secrete a thin layer of cuticle-separating fluid. Within moments, you split your old exoskeleton, softer now from the fluid's action, and shimmy free. The new cuticle underneath is pliable and pale, expanding as your body volume increases. You harden, flex your legs, and step away, leaving behind an empty glass-like shell. Growth accelerates. Over the next few days, you repeat the cycle. Feed, pause, molt. Each time, you grow by roughly 10-20% to 20 in length and gain subtle pigmentation, spots of brown and green that help you blend into the mossy substrate. You begin to sense chemical gradients, a faint concentration of electrolytes where dew accumulates, the telltale scent of decomposing leaf litter, rich in yeast. You navigate toward these richer feeding grounds, guided by chemoreception. But danger lurks in this microscopic realm. Protus, single-cell predators, skulk beneath the surface, waiting to engulf unwary prey. You detect the shift in viscosity as a paramecium glides nearby. Instinctively, you freeze. You're so small that even a slight current could carry you into its path. The paramecium brushes past and you exhale. No breath but a cellular sigh of relief and continue on your hunt. On the third day, you encounter another species of tardigrade. It's larger its legs thicker, its claws hooked at the tips. You exchange no words, for none exist to speak, but you register recognition, kin, yet competitor. You steer clear of its feeding patch, avoiding confrontation over scarce resources. As twilight falls, you prepare for your first anhydrobiotic trial. The temperature dips, humidity plummets, and moisture evaporates from the leaf. You secrete tree hellos molecules, natural antifreeze, and curl into the ton position retracting legs and retractile mouth parts. Your body loses over 90% of its water content. Metabolism slows to near zero. In this desiccated stasis, you await the return of moisture. Minutes stretch into hours. Time feels suspended. Yet deep within, your DNA repair enzymes remain poised to mend damage. When mist returns at dawn, you sense the hydration. Water seeps back, your cuticle rehydrates, and your body expands. You uncurl, extend your legs, and once more take in the world around you. Hungry, vulnerable, but alive. This is the first act of your life. Awakening, feeding, growing, and mastering the delicate balance between hydration and stasis. Ahead lie countless molts, extreme trials of temperature and radiation, and eventually, the moment when you'll leave eggs of your own in hidden crevices. But for now, you are a juvenile tardigrade, newly hatched and determined to endure. As you emerge from your first cycles of feeding and molting, you feel the subtle shift of seasons. Drops no longer cling to the moss. Instead, the air grows crisp and daylight dwindles. 
You are no longer a newly hatched juvenile. Your body is more robust, your cuticle thicker, and your coloration a mosaic of amber and olive, perfectly matched to the decaying leaf litter. Yet life's challenges are only intensifying. One morning, you wake to a brittle chill. The moss around you is brittle. The dew that once bathed you is gone. Your metabolic sensors, minute receptors in your cells, detect plummeting temperatures and falling prey populations. Instinctively, you cease feeding. Instead, you gather under a protective clump of lichen, seal your mouth parts, and enter a state of torpor. Your pulse slows to near nothing, and within minutes, your oxygen consumption drops by over 90%. You contract into a tighter ton, hiding beneath layers of algal filaments. Hours pass like minutes, minutes like seconds. Even as the world around you freezes, you remain alive. No heartbeat, no movement, no sensation of cold. It is as if time itself has paused. Then, as the sun climbs and warmth returns, your cells sense the rise in temperature. Metabolism reignites. You uncurl, extend your legs, and resume feeding. This cycle may repeat dozens of times over a single season, each torpor acting as a shield against cold and starvation. Summer arrives briefly, bringing not only warmth but ultraviolet onslaught. Sunlight filtering through thinning canopy now carries more radiation. You venture onto exposed lichen patches, searching for fresh biofilms, and inadvertently expose yourself to intense UV, where many microfauna suffer DNA damage. You display remarkable resilience. Each time your DNA strands break from radiation exposure, specialized repair enzymes, the homologs of bacterial RECA, spring into action. They scan billions of base pairs, aligning strands and rejoining fragments with near-perfect fidelity. You sense no pain, only a transient tingle, an echo of molecular turmoil. Within hours, your genome is restored, as if nothing had occurred. Late summer droughts sweep across the leaf litter. The world desiccates once more. Rain fails to arrive. Yet you are prepared, drawing on reserves of trehalose, a disaccharide sugar that stabilizes proteins and membranes, you slowly lose water. Up to 97% of your body's water content evaporates. Lipid bilayers fold inward. Your mitochondria enter a suspended animation. Time blurs. Days without moisture turn into weeks. You remain as a dry husk, impervious to temperature swings, from near freezing nights to scorching afternoons. Dust storms may grind you against bark. Predators pass overhead, unaware of your cryptobiotic slumber. Then, at last, a single dew droplet lands on your retreat. Water seeps through your cuticle, and your trehalose matrix dissolves. Cells rehydrate. Enzymes resume their work. You flex your legs, stretch out your buccal stylets, and drink deeply. The microcosm awakes again, and you awaken with it. Emboldened by your resilience, you venture beyond moss to the underside of bark, hunting fungal spores and nematodes. You discover that when starved, you can secrete digestive enzymes, proteases, and chitinases, directly into your prey, breaking down cell walls and tissues before ingesting the liquefied nutrients. Yet every predator has its own predator. A fast-moving mite, its eight legs spiked with hooked setae, detects your enzyme plume. You sense its approach as a disturbance in the viscous film. You try to flee, but it is faster. It grabs your posterior with its chalicere, dragging you toward a cluster of mold hyphae where it will feed. With desperate effort, you secrete a burst of extra concentrated enzymes, burning the mite's hold. It recoils, letting you escape into a crevice. Burdened but alive, you learn that every offensive weapon can turn into a vulnerability if misused. Autumn deepens. Your body, now fully mature, begins its reproductive transformation. You seek the perfect crevice, lined with fungal mycelia and sheltered from direct sun, to deposit a clutch of two to three eggs. Each egg is a transparent sphere containing an embryo and diapause, encased in a tough corian, infused with melanin, to absorb harmful radiation. After laying your eggs, you patrol nearby moss once more, feeding to rebuild the reserves spent in egg production. You grow jittery as the first frost near. You must prepare for one final anhydrobiotic slumber before the eggs hatch. Frost creeps across the landscape, and you re-enter tone again. Metabolism all but stops. You drift among the microhabitat, a tiny stone in the frozen mosaic. Beneath you, your eggs remain viable, braced against cold, drought, and UV. Weeks later, when spring finally returns, the eggs sense rising temperatures and moisture. Minute cracks form in their shells, 
New juveniles wriggle free. Your legacy begins anew. Though you may never meet these offspring, your genetic line persists, each hatchling a testament to endurance against impossible odds. In this microcosm, where a single drop of water can mean life or death, and where a moment's scarcity can halt time itself, you, the tardigrade, stand supreme. You have mastered extremes, radiation, freezing, desiccation, starvation, and emerge not merely as survivor, but as champion of one of Earth's toughest As spring's first warm rains awaken the forest floor, your offspring stir within their resilient eggs. Tiny cracks appear, and one by one, the juvenile tardigrades wriggle free, each no bigger than a grain of sand, yet primed to endure extremes far beyond most life forms' capabilities. Your chapter nears its close, but your influence persists in every drop of dew, every fragment of moss, and every molecule of air within this miniature realm. While you feed, molt, and reproduce, you and your kin shift the very structure of your habitat. Your grazing on biofilm and fungal spores opens pockets in the moss layer, allowing water to seep deeper and roots of moss to anchor more firmly. Your excreted metabolites fertilize bacterial and algal growth, fostering a richer, more diverse microbial community. In essence, you engineer the micro world, shaping soil aggregation, nutrient flow, and microclimatic conditions for countless other invertebrates. To the mite that feasted on your enzyme plume, and to the nematode you once pierced with your stylets, you are both predator and prey. By regulating populations of bacteria, algae, and microfungi, you help maintain ecological balance. Your eggs, laid in clusters beneath lichen or bark, feed protozoa and microcrustaceans, becoming a vital seasonal nutrient source at the base of the food web. In this dance of life and death at microscopic scale, you uphold the cycles that sustain entire forest ecosystems. Whenever pollution drifts across continents, minute concentrations of heavy metals or acid rain alter your survival rates. Researchers observe changes in tardigrade community composition as early warning signs of soil acidification, ozone depletion, or pesticide contamination. Though you cannot speak, your presence and absence bears witness to human impact on remote habitats. Now after countless cycles of feeding, torpor, radiation repair, and cryptobiosis, your body begins its final molt. You shed your cuticle for the last time, your cells preparing for an ultimate and hydrobiotic state. You drift into metabolic suspension, awaiting the next moisture pulse that may or may not arrive. Should conditions never improve, your lineage persists in the eggs you've laid and the microbial communities you've nurtured. You become part of the substrate itself, a permanent mark upon the Earth's most hidden corners. The story of the tardigrade is a testament to life's tenacity, yet it is also a mirror held up to our own fragility. If a creature smaller than a pinhead can survive vacuum, UV, and sub-zero extremes, what hope do we have if we continue to degrade habitats, pollute soils, and accelerate climate change? Today, scientists and citizens alike are uncovering the wonders of the microcosm. Yet these environments, moss beds, lichen-covered boulders, leaf litter, remain vulnerable to urban sprawl, deforestation, and chemical runoff. Preserve microhabitats. Before trampling a hiking trail or clearing brush, remember the hidden world beneath your feet. Walk lightly. Avoid disturbing moss mats and rotting logs. Reduce chemical use. Minimize pesticide and fertilizer runoff by choosing organic gardening and low-impact lawn care. Your choices protect the water droplets that cradle the anhydrobiotic tardigrade. Support research and education. Back initiatives that train students and volunteers to monitor microscopic biodiversity. The more we understand these tiny guardians, the better we can safeguard them and ourselves. From the depths of extreme environments to the damp gloom of forest floors, tardigrades chart a path of resilience we would do well to follow. Our world's future depends not only on charismatic megafauna, but on the smallest stewards of life. Protect the tiny, and you protect the grand. In every dewdrop, a saga of survival unfolds. Let us be worthy custodians of that story.